In this video, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about how microbial mats um, have different metabolisms in different places, depending on the gradients, and how they influence the uh, cycling of uh, oxygen, a little bit of carbon, a little bit of sulfur. We're going to leave the nitrogen out of it. Nitrogen cycling is really important, but they're there are quite a few reactions. So a microbial mat is a community of organisms that are living on a surface. And usually there's light coming from above that's supporting a photosynthesis. And the organisms at the top are usually cyanobacteria plus algae, and these are performing uh, the oxygenic photosynthesis. So they're producing oxygen and organic carbon at the top. The oxygen um, then gets consumed by heterotrophic bacteria, and those heterotrophs are often living uh, within the cyanobacterial mat, but because they don't actually require the light, they can live uh, deeper down. So these organisms um, consume oxygen at the top, so the brown ones um, consume oxygen. Since oxygen is being produced right in the mat here, there's often a peak of oxygen concentration in the mat. And because it's not being produced down below, uh, it becomes anoxic with depth. The reason it becomes anoxic is because there are bacteria consuming that, that oxygen. Uh, in the modern oceans, there's also lots of sulfate ions in the water and sulfate reduction is one of those cases where the reaction with organic matter produces quite a bit of energy and most sulfate reduction can't happen in the presence of oxygen but the microbial mats make these micro environments within them uh, that are anoxic and so you do end up with some sulfate reduction associated with the cyanobacteria and also uh, deeper down in the mats here. Yeah. So the blue ones are uh, sulfate reducers. So they take sulfate plus organic matter and create uh, sulfide and carbon dioxide. All right? And the sulfide dissolves in the water, so you end up with sulfide in the mats here and it um, decreases upward. So there are two ways, reasons it decreases. First of all, some organisms can react oxygen and sulfide to create energy and then the sulfide can also uh, react with the oxygen um, to form, go back to forming sulfur or sulfate um, itself. Okay. And so this, this upper part of the mat has uh, these two processes going on. And as you get further down in the mat, the sulfate declines as, an, as something that can oxidize organic matter. The oxygen also declines. And so there's less and less chemical reactions to form, but fermentation can take place. So the, the fermentation Basically, there can be fermentation sort of throughout the mats, but they're usually not abundant. But when you get further down into the mat where there's not much to oxidize things, down here you end up with fermentation. And the fermentation basically takes the organic compounds and produces carbon dioxide if it's a little bit more reducing or methane 
or both. And um, then you get, still get some organic molecules that come out, but they tend to be smaller and less energetic through time. So I erase some of the words and I'm going to uh, make a graph. So this is a concentration. Here. And we'll do it from the water down into the mat. And in modern Earth, we, if we look first at the oxygen, we have um, quite a bit of oxygen. I'll draw it in green. So there's some amount in the water column. It's being produced right at the surface of the mat so that the concentration usually goes up. And then it's getting consumed by the respiring organisms. And it goes to zero at some point with depth. So we have our typical oxygen profile here. Um, we can look at sulfate. So sulfate um, has some concentration in the water column. It will vary depending on what it is. It's not typically being produced very much in the mat unless, it's re unless it's, there's sulfide reacting with oxygen. And it usually just declines with depth. It persists to deeper levels than the oxygen itself does. Um, because most of it's consumed in anoxic uh, conditions. And then we have sulfide, which in the presence of oxygen is close to zero. And where there's oxygen present, um, it's very low. Even, there might be just a teeny bit from some sulfate reduction. But then as the sulfate reduction increases, the sulfide in the water increases until the sulfur is consumed. So this would be a combination of H2S and HS minus, depends on the, the details of the pH. And then if we actually, if we have some fermentation that's producing methane, that methane will react with the oxygen and there'll be some concentration of methane at depth and it gets consumed when there's oxygen present and um, is basically zero in the water column. So one of the reasons we get stinky sediments, especially if there's sulfur around, is because the sulfide produces that rotten egg smell, um, which we've as humans have evolved to think smells bad in most cases because getting to breathing in too much of it um, is poisonous to us. Okay. If you don't have very much sulf sulfate in the water, the, there's not sulfide and the smell is different and you get many more of the fermentation products and you can get things like ammonia and those, those have a distinctly different smell. So this particular um, chemical gradients are related very much to what's in the water column as well as the microbial processes that are happening. Now if the water is uh, has a lot of turbidity in it and the light goes down or for example at night um, the oxygen production shuts off and the mat um, at night will go anoxic. And then the, the sulfide can diffuse up and there's no oxygen um, for it to react with. That sulfur can extend up to the surface of the mat and then the sulfate um, will can, can still decline. Um, because you can still get the sulfate reduction. So either with night changes in the day and the amount of light, or if the sea level water goes up or becomes more turbid and cuts off the oxygen, that's when um, the, the chemistry of the mats will change a lot in response to that. If we think about 
um, the presence of iron. Um, iron is not soluble in the water in the oxidized form, but if you have sediment grains in with your mat, Could be hematite or gertite. Um, when they're down in this anoxic zone, they can be reduced. So you end up with the iron three plus going to iron two plus, right? With um, some organic molecules um, to support it. And the iron 2 plus is soluble, and you can get the iron 2 plus coming up uh, to the surface as an iron. So if you have iron oxides, the microbial mats might dissolve those, and it'll affect the iron cycle as well. Thanks for watching.